Okay, we're back. Um, I've switched over to this other rug, this other fish one that I've been working on, and I wanted to see these pretty colors since it's uh, quite a bit different than the other one. But what I really wanted to talk about is that this one was the exact same pattern as the other ones, but this is quite a bit smaller. It's thinner sheets. They're less expensive sheets. Um, I've also not been real happy. There's a lot of fraying in these. Um, I, you know, I like 100% cotton with a, or 50% minimum cotton, and these were probably just less expensive sheets in general. So uh, I'm not as happy with that part of it, but it makes a really beautiful rug, and I'm very happy with that. So let's go ahead and show you how to finish it, um, the corner here of the tail. Remember, we were going just one stitch in the end, and then two stitches, single crochets, in your first hole. So we finished with nine rows. You could have done 11 or something longer. Um, you could have even done, if you wanted this to be more severe, you could have done two single crochets in the final hole instead of one, and then two single crochets in the starting hole as well, and that would have made it more severe if you wanted that. But um, that's not what I did. I did one single crochet in the final hole and two single crochets in the beginning hole up once we flipped our work. So let's go ahead and finish this. I'm going to do a single crochet. If you've seen a lot of my other rugs, you probably already know how to do all this. Here's your final hole right here. So I had to find it kind of. I'm going to do sing two single crochets, just, I mean, one single crochet in this hole, just like I had been doing. And then I'm going to snip it. And I'm going to do it here. See how it's been joined? So this is really a good place to cut it. Get rid of this. This is going to be used in another. Then we're going to get out your tapestry needle. And I like to have um, a number 13 tra tapestry needle. Here's my, my crochet bag that I like. Oh, it's not there. Here it is. Um, I've used a 16 too, and it works fine. I just happen to like the 13 better. So my crochet bag, I just... I love my crochet bags that I have found and got them embroidered and designed the fronts of them that you can find on my website. There's uh, four different designs right now, and um, this with all the hearts and stuff is actually I sat with a guy who, who created it with me, and uh, we tweaked it the way I wanted it. Okay, so what you're going to do is you did your left your loop, you pulled your uh, crochet hook out. If you go ahead and feed your material through, I happened to thread it first, which you didn't necessarily need to and you're going to give it a nice little tug and what you're going to want to do, you don't want to do, flip it back this way because that's going to make it look bad you're going to feed it in let me turn it so it's better for me you're going to hide it so I'm going to actually work it down this way a little bit first because I think it will look better see, kind of get that nub laying down there See, this is what I'm talking about. And that's why if you use regular material, this is what will happen every time, or almost every time. You'll have a lot of this going on. And uh, I don't have a lot of that because um, I usually buy sheets. I had a lot given to me from an estate, and they were beautiful. This is a beautiful material, but it um, isn't my first preference. So then you're going to just find the path of least resistance to kind of feed it through and blend it in just kind of try to hide it there's all different ways to do this and uh, occasionally I have someone write to me and say I do it this way and that is great you find something that works for you you just do it any way that you like I don't have the corner on the market of the only way to finish a rug but for those of you who don't know how to finish a rug, I want to show you. Okay. So, sorry you happen to watch me feed it so long because I'm burning up time here on your film, but I need it to be long enough so it won't come out far enough into it. I haven't ever had one unravel, um, even though they've been washed numerous times um, 
Okay, we're going to call that it. Um, well, maybe one more. I a lot of times do it pretty far when I'm doing it myself, to be honest, and I'm not got the tape on me. I just like to. So what you're going to do is you're going to give it one extra little tug. You see it in there? I'm going to tug it down. I'm going to take my scissors and push it as far as I can back. Cut it, and then just give it a little tug, and it disappears. Okay? So we're going to show you that, and then you're going to do the same thing on the front of the fish. Here's the other fish, and here's the mouth, the one that we've been working on, um, right here. And I'm going to start it, but I'm not going to finish this part. I'm going to show you. You're going to thread your needle, your tapestry needle, with your nice wide hole, or yarn needle. It's called both things. And see, I'm not going to pull it back that way. I'm going to find a way to feed it down through here. Sometimes I do this. I feed it along the border and kind of just find a way to blend it in. Now I sometimes really do that if, say I have a place that's sticking out where the place was, um, I had that on the last rug I worked on, there was a place where um, it kind of, there was a piece that where it was joined was sticking out. Well, I just kind of grabbed it and hit it at the same time which was great. It was a way to kind of do two things at the same time. So here I've worked it down. This is another way you can do it. And then find another way to weed it, to um, wind it back in there. Okay. So you're going to do the same thing. I'm going to stop right there and because um, I want to get on to showing you how to get your border started and where to get your border started. So I chose for this rug a dark green. It's not the same that's in here, but it's a similar dark green. And um, I thought it would accent well and it was what something I had. So I went ahead and chose this to start it. So. Where I suggest you start it, here you're looking at your fish. Your mouth is up here on this end, and then here's your brow, and here is your back part, and here starts your sloping section. You can start it and stop it wherever you want. I thought a good place to camouflage it would be right here. This, this right here was where I started my last one and I thought it was a really good place to hide it because you're kind of going to have this little point here anyways as you're coming around here when we come back in and it will kind of blend it in when you're finishing it. So let me show you how we get started. You're going to go ahead and do a slip stitch, slip knot, cross over the long end, pull the material through, put the shorter end, the tail, in your hand put your hook in just like how you start your rug and we're just basically going to attach it on. There's several different ways that this can be done and this is how I did it. Is Sometimes I do it where I just grab it. This I like to do it this way too where I actually grab the material from the other side and pull it through and then I cross over and pull them both off. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either save this tail and blend it in afterwards, but I'm going to go ahead and see if we can go ahead and blend it right now, right along there as we go along. So you're going to do your border stitches. You're going to find available holes. And there's going to be certain places when you're going to have to add two. Like here I'm going to actually add two stitches in order to get around this corner. Every time you get to a corner you may have to add a stitch. Also, some of these places may be farther in between. See, here's a place when we come back over here. I'm going to probably in some of these because it doesn't, it's not readily going to go in there. So I'm probably going to put a couple stitches there depending on, you know, whether I think it needs it or not. And then a couple single crochets here. So they're all single crochets, but you may have to put more than one when you have a longer section. Along here, the holes are going to be obvious and it's going to be just fine. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> to go 
one in each hole, but I'm going to start with two in each hole. See this little knot here? Whenever you have something like that, just try to hide it. It's not, you know, rocket science here, but just try to hide it with your stitch so you don't notice it. So I'm going to go back into that hole, I decided, and because we got to get her over that bump, trying to keep that laying flat. All right, look at that. We've kind of hidden it. So now we're going to go into and do single crochets all the way along this border. You're just going to find a hole. In between these rows is a good hole, but when you come on the slopes, you're going to have to work a little bit harder to, you know, use your own judgment. So I'm going to do just a couple. And then we're going to end up coming back where I'm going to show you, I'm not going to let you watch the whole thing, how we do the mouth. How we finish off the mouth part to make it look nice and give us that, that more pointed look that I have on my fish. Okay, so you're just going to move along. So we'll be back in a minute when we're back at the mouth. Thank you.